Right now, I'd like to invite Muhammad Ali Nyang to speak about what he's been doing at Temple. He's a senior at Temple University and has won numerous innovative competitions. Competition <laughs> So, hello, my name is Muhammad Ali Yang. Happy to be here. And I'm currently a senior at Temple University. I'm majoring in international business and entrepreneurship. I'm also minoring in sustainability and economics. Um, I'm also a co-founder of Mind Old Traders. It's a social venture. And our mission is to purchase, process, and fortify rice that's grown by small-scale farmers in the West African country of Mali. A little bit of background information on myself. So my mom was originally from Guinea. My dad, originally from Senegal. Um, I carry a Malian passport. After being born in Saudi Arabia and growing up in Cameroon, Niger, Kenya, <laughs> and graduating in Ethiopia before leaving for France and now transferring to the US. <laughs> By the way, I'm only 22. I know Africa is not a country, but I call myself African. Fair enough, I'm confused myself. <laughs> so, our venture, I co-founded a venture, Malo Traders, with my brother Salif. And just to give you a quick background on how the idea came across, in 2008, there was riots all across the world, in over 25 countries, we called them food riots, uh, going from mainland China to Egypt. The second time was the good one. And um, Latin America, Mali was spared. Mali is one of the few democracies out there. It is also the birthplace of Tombouctou, so we had that. We had a political culture that was spread. But it gave a message to us saying that the root cause, can you change the slide, please? The root cause of political unrest, social unrest, and unhappy people was related to malnutrition and hunger. Uh, a person that cannot eat implies that that person, for sure, cannot afford education, for sure cannot afford basic health care, and definitely for sure is pessimistic about the future. And nothing is more dangerous than a person that has nothing to lose, that joins a mob, that joins his village, that joins a city, a community, an entire country that has absolutely nothing to lose because we're living in such, such poverty. Bob Marley once said that a hungry man is an angry man. And history will prove it. Next slide, please. So let's talk about Mali specifically. And this applies to many other African countries and Latin American countries as well as Asian countries. In 2008, we wasted enough rice to feed 580,000 people. Yet we, we were begging for international relief agencies to deliver food because a portion of our population was starved. And our project and our adventure, we came up with an innovative way of storing and avoiding waste. We not invent the technology, we, we were procuring it from a company that's based in Massachusetts called GrainPro. That's 100% eco-friendly because store rice without using any, any forms of chemicals. And at the same time, we could increase the farmers that think of because there's no more waste. As of today, farmers are losing about $20 million worth of rice because they don't have proper storage and processing solutions. That's like Dell building a laptop, putting money, labor into a laptop. And when laptop works, they put it in a, in a box, rather than put it on the shelf and wait for somebody to come and buy it, you put it outside for the rain to destroy it. That's the way we're losing our crops. And it's unnecessary. Next slide. So it's clear that we need more food in Africa. We need more quantity. But that's not enough. We realize that hidden hunger, malnutrition, so if it's African that has the belly full, ate good fufu, ate good jollof rice, guess what? You're still anemic. You're malnourished. And the Mali, every 10 minutes, by the time I finish this presentation, one kid will have died. By the time we end this conference, you guys can do the math. Because of malnutrition. Not because of malaria, not because of whatsoever. That kid will die home due to malnutrition. Like if that was not sufficient, we have 35,000 women each year that die while giving birth. Giving birth should be the most joyful moment in a family, but it's the most dangerous thing to do if a woman is anemic. 
and 67% of women in Mali are anemic. So if they don't end up dying, the baby ends up dying. And if they both survive, the mom loses her wellness, loses her productivity, and you get this baby that has limited cognitive functions. So no way for him to be as educated as he was supposed to be, and no way for him to be as productive as he was supposed to be. So we came up with another innovation. We did not make it up. A Seattle-based NGO has this great innovation called Ultra Rice. This rice is fortified in micronutrients, such as vitamin A, zinc, folic acid, iron, vitamins that we get while buying a bottle of vitamin water. I want to go to the supermarket and decide to buy all brand flakes rather than Frosties. Or when you buy a gallon of milk and it's rich in vitamin D. So we took the same principle and just applied it to rice, which is the most consumed staple in Mali, and it's the most consumed staple in the world. 3.4 billion people rely on rice for their nutritional need on a daily basis. And our, and, our, and our mean is totally culturally inappropriate. We're not asking people to change the way they eat, the way they cook, or what they like to eat. This rice does not smell like medicine, yet it works like medicine. So uh, how do we produce the rice? When we process rice, we have a byproduct, which is rice flour and broken kernels that you cannot sell, rather than throw it away or give it to the animals. We mix it in a fine flour, add the vitamins that we need to add, based on the recommendation of a nutritionist who go to a village, well, in our village, we need vitamin A. Nutritionist B says, in our village, we need zinc. And this one just says, no, we are really sick. We need zinc, vitamin A, and iron. Could you put all of it in the kernel? Yes, we can. So it's not a cookie cutter, cutter solution, it's a customizable solution. So our true innovation is, we're doing all this for profit. Excuse me, not just for profit. It's not a charity, it's not a nonprofit. It's not a philanthropy uh, initiative. This is a business. In our business, we have to deliver good. People have to be healthy. And we're 100% financially sustainable. No need for grants, no need for subsidies. The more good we do, the better our products, the more money we make. So our incentive is to produce the most nutritious rice in the world so you can make the most money in the world possible. So early on, I mentioned Bob Marley. We have a lot of academics in this room who say maybe he's not, you know, he doesn't have the credential he should have. So now let me mention uh, Mahatma Gandhi, who said that uh, poverty is the worst form of violence, and I agree. And uh, it could be very, very dangerous. I was in Tunisia when the riots broke out, and you could trust me when he says that. So Africa is not all about problems, and I agree. I totally agree with what the uh, professor said. I totally agree with uh, Aida said. What are we going to do? In our venture, we have three points on which we focus the most. Innovation. Innovation does not mean, mandatorily mean creating a new technology or engineering. No, no, no. Innovation is addressing a problem that exists in the world that has not been addressed in the correct manner, or in the most efficient and effective manner. Or just a problem that's neglected. It's not sexy. Malnutrition, hunger, I rather work on Wall Street. All right, you can do that. So innovation. And each and one of us sitting in this room has an expertise because it's getting a college degree, maybe get a master's, maybe get a PhD. We could be innovative. Let's never neglect the power of innovation. And then collaboration. As I said, in order for us to get our plan, we traveled. We went to Mexico, France, Mali, Senegal, Silicon Valley, Yale, Harvard, MIT, Washington, D.C., soon in New York, today at Philadelphia, we want all across the world to rally support, to get the expertise we needed, to collect funds, and just to get people to follow us and help us achieve our social mission. And at last, the most important thing that fuels us is compassion. What keeps us up awake, my brother and I, which is my co-founder, Salif, as a hungry farmer should be an oxymoron. And each and one of us here has a form of passion, a topic where you could apply your energy to, whether it's cancer, whether it's HIV AIDS, whether it's access to energy that people that don't have it, access to education, have a meaning in life. And I just want to end this conversation with a positive tone. We are accountable to three stakeholders, whether it's Maru the farmer, Medina our indirect client that's yielding healthy in the rice, and our shareholder, that can be Michael, Bob, Paul, Jacques, it doesn't matter. All each one of these constituents is gaining something for our venture. 
And we truly believe, at the end of the day, if you use a little bit of hard work plus innovation, we could make the world on a global scale a better and safer place for all of us. Thank you very much for your attention.